Laundry detergents and air fresheners have long promised to keep your house and clothes smelling sunshine fresh and rain shower clean. But what they haven't said is what exactly you're sniffing when you snuggle up in your just washed sheets. After hearing from people who said strong scents made them sick, University of Washington researcher Ann Steinman scratched the surface and found almost a hundred chemicals that weren't listed on the labels. According to a report in the journal Environmental Impact Assessment Review, plug-in air fresheners, scented sprays, dryer sheets, and detergents all contained a mixture of volatile organic compounds. Since manufacturers aren't required to list their ingredients for such consumer products, the box is only admitted to containing a mixture of perfume oils. But five out of the six products Steinman tested emitted one or more so-called hazardous air pollutants, which are carcinogens determined to have no safe exposure level by the EPA. While the study did not test for any human health risk from exposure to these chemicals, Steinman says the next time the air in your house smells stale, maybe you should just open a window. If you've ever been to an all-you-can-eat buffet, you know how important it is to carefully weigh your options. You don't want to fill up on salad when so many calorie-laden delights await. It seems some birds also weigh their mealtime choices, literally. A study finds that Mexican jays pick up and shake peanuts to assess their relative heft before choosing one. That report is served up in the Journal of Ornithology. <whistles> Foods that hide their edible bits on the inside present a challenge to hungry diners. How can you tell which fruits are ripe or which shells harbor the biggest nuts? We humans knock on melons or squeeze avocados. But how do other species select the highest quality snacks? To find out how the jays do it, researchers fiddled with their feed. First, they doctored peanuts so that some contained three nuts while others had none. When they offered these pods to some jays, the birds turned their beaks up at the empty shells and instead chose those that were full. And when the jays were allowed to choose between normal peanuts and those that weighed just one gram more, because the researchers had stuffed them with clay, the birds again went for the heavier meal. Videos revealed that the jays shake the nuts before selecting one, which apparently lets them gauge the nuts' mass and perhaps also listen for the rattle of a well-packed shell. Pretty clever for a bird brain. The sugar candy business had a fight in the 1830s when the market started up to the technological advances and toffee was readily available in bulk. This was a product that was not only accessible to the rich since even poor class people could easily afford this daily item. The market was ever increasing because the highest consumers were babies. This brought revolution in many drug companies whose sour and bitter medicines were complemented with sugar to chemically enhance their taste. The food and beverage industry spend more than $10 billion a year in the U.S. to market their products to children, and it's money well spent for them. By age two, children may already harbor preferences for certain brands, and kids under six can often associate brands with specific products, such as McDonald's. Here's how powerful the McDonald's brand is, according to a study just published in the August issue of the journal Archives of Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine. Preschool kids were given the exact same food in either unmarked packages or in McDonald's packaging,
but the kids, all between three and five years old, said they liked the taste better when the food looked like it was from McDonald's. One of the foods tested was carrots. What's up, Doc? What's up is that the kids said they liked, quote, McDonald's carrots, end quote, better than just plain carrots by more than two to one. And the more TV sets in a kid's home, the more likely he or she was to prefer the food in McDonald's bag. We all know that drinking can cloud judgment. That's why you should never email an ex after you've had a few. But for teenagers, doing dumb things now because of alcohol may be just the start. Because research with animals suggests that drinking during adolescence can set you up for a whole lifetime of bad decisions. The studies in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. People who abuse alcohol when they're young don't always make good choices as adults. But it's been unclear whether the drink gives them the stupids, or whether folks prone to poor choices are predisposed to drink. One way to tackle the question is by studying alcohol intake in animals, like rats. But rats don't like to drink. So to make the alcohol more palatable, scientists infused it into a tasty gel matrix. Yes, the researchers gave teenage rats jello shots. And the animal's decision-making ability stayed impaired well into adulthood, as measured by their tendency to chase after rewards with associated high risk, rather than taking a sure thing. So, young party animals, remember the words of Faber's Dean Wormer. Drunk and stupid is no way to go through life, sir. Telephone etiquette is one of the most basic talents to be learned. The first thing one should remember is to take a deep breath before picking up a call, because we tend to exhale when we run. That gives mobility to the voice, and we sound clearer. We must call our names with full confidence. That makes the listener interested in listening to all. We must be modest in our talks and listen moderately to the speaker as well. The way we speak on the telephone conveys more than 75% of the idea we wish to convey. Compounds found in the herb thyme have antibiotic properties. Now scientists have demonstrated that thyme might have a future role in fighting acne. A number of factors cause acne, but the primary agents are bacteria called Propionibacterium acnes, or PA. Topical treatments containing benzoyl peroxide are commonly used to kill the bacteria, but they can irritate the skin. To test other options, researchers steeped thyme, marigold, and myrrh in alcohol to extract the plant's active compounds. They tested the resulting tinctures on the PA bacteria. All three herbs killed more of the bacteria than an alcohol control. Thyme was the most effective of all. And thyme was also significantly more effective than the highest prescribed concentration of benzoyl peroxide. The research was presented at a conference of the Society for General Microbiology in Dublin. The scientists say more research should be done to understand how the tinctures work on the molecular level and to test them on actual skin environments. Cooks already pass the thyme to add flavor to food, but acne sufferers could someday see thyme fly into their medicine cabinets. <laughs> 